Well, good, good morning. I'm uh, happy to be here with Health Minister Tyler Shandro, with Dr. Mark Joffe from Alberta Health Services and Dr. Derek Emery, a radiologist from the University of Alberta Hospital, to announce another important milestone in Alberta's historic e effort to strengthen and improve our health care system. Reducing wait times for key health services is a top priority for Alberta's government. That includes shorter wait times for scheduled surgeries, a promise we're delivering by offering thousands more of hip, knee, and cataract surgeries, and by investing in new and expanded operating rooms. Minister Shandro, uh, Alberta Health Services, Covenant Health, and our partners at Chartered Surgical Facilities are doing amazing work to get this done even during this pandemic. This priority work also includes improving access to diagnostic imaging in particular by providing more timely access to CT scans and MRIs. <clears throat> Diagnostic imaging is a technique that many Albertans are familiar with. It's a kind of blanket term used to describe the non-invasive ways that doctors can look inside the body to help determine an injury or illness or to see how a patient is responding uh, to a course of medical treatment. If you had an x-ray to diagnose a fractured bone experience or experienced a, a routine mammogram, for example, or if you've seen an image of your unborn child through an ultrasound, you've experienced the marvel of diagnostic imaging firsthand. Overall, diagnostic imaging provides timely access to services to help illnesses get diagnosed quicker so that treatment can also get underway faster. Most often, the test can be done with little discomfort or inconvenience to the patient, and they're typically done close to home. Alberta's government recognizes the vital importance of these tests and spends over a billion dollars each year on diagnostic imaging services. Uh, almost half of that is spent in Alberta Health Services and Covenant Health facilities, with the rest used to pay for diagnostic imaging services in community settings and in doctors' offices and clinics. A significant portion of the AHS and Covenant funding, about $148 million last year, is used to provide MRIs and CAT scans, largely in hospital settings. It is this area of diagnostic imaging, often used to diagnose internal trauma or to achieve a more comprehensive internal view, that is cause for some concern right now. And that's because too many Albertans are waiting too long for access to non-emergency MRI and CT scans. So today, I am pleased to announce our aggressive plan to drive down wait times for CT scans and MRIs. Budget 2021 was passed by the legislature last night, before the beginning of the upcoming fiscal year. And it, its primary focus was on supporting health care, with an additional $900 million baseline investment, in addition to the $1.5 billion contingency for COVID-related care. The budget commits specifically, and this is what we're announcing today, $33 million in one-time funding that will ensure all Albertans who need non-emergency CT scans and MRIs get those quickly to set them on their road to treatment and to health. With this bump up in funding, AHS will perform about 50,000 additional CT scans and about 45,000 additional MRI scans throughout the province uh, in 2021-22 over the next year. This is the first step to drive down overall wait times and reduce the testing backlog created by the COVID-19 pandemic. Overall, that's a 15% hike in the number of scans performed by AHS uh, two years back. It's a 12% increase for CT scans and a 22% increase for MRIs. So Minister Chandra will speak in more detail about how this has already sparked improvement but this is uh, more than just a budget commitment. Actions by previous governments, including one-time surge funding, didn't bring lasting change because it didn't come with an overall strategy to, to spur system-wide improvements. So we kept spending more and more for less. In fact, wait times ballooned anyway. In March 2019, almost 29,000 more people were on wait times to have CT and MRI exams than there were in March 2015. And that's just not acceptable. Waiting for a diagnosis and for treatment can be painful. It creates anxiety and often results in worse health outcomes. Albertans deserve better. So our budget commitment is part of an aggressive action plan that will improve the entire diagnostic imaging system without the need for one-off funding boosts that cost Alberta taxpayers 
without providing long-term better results. Not only will Alberta Health Services provide thousands more tests to the Albertans who most need them for treatment decisions, but AHS will also work better to manage increased demand by reducing unnecessary tests that don't provide value to patients. Improved referral and booking systems will provide clinical support to family doctors and specialists to make referrals for the right patients. All cost savings will be reinvested to ensure every Albertan who needs an MRI or CT scan gets them within wait times that are recommended by medical experts. That is our commitment. We'll improve access to these key diagnostic services to get faster care for patients. We'll ensure that it's uh, done efficiently so taxpayers don't have to spend more in an area that's already benefiting from record high funding levels. Alberta spending a record $23 billion on health care in this year upcoming, and we continue to lead the country with the highest, most expensive health system in, in terms of uh, per person expenditures, plus another $1.25 billion to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. We're determined that this hard-earned taxpayer money gets real results in faster health care. So I'll now ask uh, Minister Chandra to speak more in more detail about the action plan uh, for the future. Tyler? Thanks, Premier. And uh, first, uh, just a comment, because Premier and I are both wearing purple today. Today is March 26th. It's Purple Day. I encourage all Albertans to, uh, to wear purple like us. It's a day that uh, we raise awareness about uh, epilepsy, to do our part to remove the stigma associated with it and to empower those who live with epilepsy. So thank you to all the amazing volunteer groups and the staff of the epilepsy organizations across Alberta who do their part and that they're, especially today, uh, doing amazing work to, uh, to raise that awareness. Uh, thanks again to uh, Dr. Uh, Joffe and, and Dr. Uh, Emery for joining us today. Now, we promised Albertans the better access to health care, and today we're backing up those words with a plan to improve access in one of the areas where that it's needed the most. Mm -hmm. One of the first things that I, I learned as health minister is, uh, is that most people can agree on two things. First, our health care system in Canada gives patients great care once they get in. But here's the second thing that everybody agrees on. The problem is that it takes too long to get it. Now, we've kind of gotten used to knowing some patients wait far too long, as if that weren't really a core issue. You'll get great care once you get in. This is a great health care system, and patients do get great care. And I'm just incredibly proud of the system, of the people who work in it, and the care that they provide to patients in Alberta. But we can do better. We can give people great care when they need it. And we can make sure that no one waits far too long. And nowhere does that apply more than in MRI and CT. As Premier said, for years now, too many Albertans have waited far too long for their scans. Albertans rely on these tests to diagnose serious health problems like cancer, stroke, and MS. And they're used to, to, uh, they're, they're used to a, um, a diagnosis of a huge range of conditions uh, from brain trauma to arthritis as well. Let me say uh, first that patients in emergency and admitted to hospital get CT scans and MRIs quickly. Emergency scans are generally done within 24 hours. But patients who are not in hospital are waiting far too long. And it's delaying their treatment and putting their health at risk. It's been that way for years and it's time that we fix it. In fact, a year ago in early 2020, I directed AHS to implement an aggressive action plan to bring wait times within acceptable benchmarks. And then the pandemic came to Alberta, and we had to put this plan on pause along with uh, a lot of others. And we had to postpone scheduled surgeries and some non-emergency diagnostic tests to ensure that the, the system would have the capacity to care for a surge of COVID patients. Now in, in October, of 2020, AHS restarted the work to increase access to diagnostic imaging services. And we've already had some success, although the pace of improvement has been limited by the pandemic. And as of December of 2020, 26% fewer Albertans were on the wait list for a CT scan than there were at the peak in March. And wait times decreased substantially for the most urgent patients waiting at home for a publicly funded scan in a hospital. And that's in part because AHS performed about 30,000 
more CT scans than originally planned last year. But it's also in part because the pandemic has decreased demand for the exams. Fewer physicians are ordering them because fewer patients are seeking care. And we're seeing the same thing with MRIs. The wait list was down 10% in December compared to, to March, and wait times also decreased. And this is happening in other areas as well, from emergency to cancer screenings, and it's not what we want to see. We're reminding people at every opportunity that the system is safe and people should seek care when they need it. And we expect demand to come back as we roll out vaccinations and we start to put the pandemic behind us once and for all. Either way, we're going to bring wait times for CT and MRI down and we're going to keep them down. AHS will perform more than a half a million CT scans this year and by the fiscal year 24-25, they'll increase that by about 80,000. For MRI, AHS will do more than 240,000 scans this year and add about 15,000 by the year 24 for a total of about 255,000 exams. Now, these increases are going to make a real difference to patients and a real difference to families and to doctors because they're the ones who have to tell patients how long they're going to wait. And they're just as frustrated as their patients are. Now, we promised Albertans we'd strengthen our publicly funded health care system. We said that from the start, and that means better access. And we're going to deliver with the support of the physicians and the staff who do the MRI and the CT scans and give patients all the care that they rely on day in and day out. I'd like now to invite Dr. Mark Jaffe to uh, speak on behalf of AHS and then we'll hear, hear from Dr. Emery. Mark. Thank you, Minister Shandro, and thank you for having me here today. <clears throat> I understand how important it is for patients to receive timely access to diagnostic testing and to have quick turnaround of results. We're listening to the concerns of Albertans and we're actively working to improve access to these very important services. The CT and MRI implementation plan will minimize wait times, will decrease costs per test, and will help AHS better manage the demand on these services. Managing costs is about evaluating where diagnostic imaging services are most needed and how to best allocate staffing resources and then reinvesting savings to ensure long-term success. Managing wait times involves looking at overall demand for diagnostic imaging services across the province and allocating the right level of service based on community needs. Bookings will now be made across all zones to manage surges in demand and will improve how, appoint how appointments are triaged or directed across the province. Leveraging technology and data and new tools can help us to manage the demand for imaging services most effectively. One of these new tools is an information management and clinical support system that we call ConnectCare. ConnectCare will actively help clinicians in choosing the right examination for the situation, will help reduce duplication, will improve scheduling efficiency, and will produce cost savings. ConnectCare will also help clinicians to receive test results faster and help with developing patient treatment plans. This will allow AHS to allocate resources where they are most needed by reinvesting savings back into diagnostic imaging. The plan will improve and support sustainability of CT and MR and will enhance referral and booking systems across all AHS zones. This $33 million commitment for year one of the three-year plan will allow AHS to perform 50,000 additional CT scans and 45,000 additional MR scans in the year 2021-22 throughout the province. The pursuit of more timely access to diagnostic imaging services is a journey that is evolving very quickly to keep up with our population changes and increased demands on our healthcare systems. This investment will help to ensure that Albertans receive CT and MR scans in a timely manner. 
Working in partnership with Alberta Health, we are moving towards making sure that patients and families will receive CT and MR imaging when they need it, according to clinically appropriate targets. I would like to thank Alberta Health for their commitment to improving access to these important health services in our province and in ensuring that Albertans will have access to the best health care possible. Thank you again for having me here today. I will now turn it over to Dr. Derek Emery. Thank you, Dr. Jaffe, and thank you for having me here today. As a physician, as a radiologist, I welcome this important announcement and the investment in imaging that it represents. This has come at a good time. I have practiced radiology in Alberta for over 20 years, and I have seen how delays in imaging have resulted in delays in diagnosis and result in harm to our patients. Imaging exams such as CT and MRI are essential in the care of many patients. Imaging plays a vital role in diagnosing a wide range of illnesses and injuries. Everything from trauma to cancer. Imaging helps to guide treatment and monitor results. Today's announcement is an important step forward in reducing wait times for these important services. This will help ensure more timely care for Albertans. This will improve the patient experience as people shorter waits for their imaging appointments. With more timely access to CT and MRI, there's opportunity for more timely diagnosis, more timely treatment. With more timely treatment, there's the possibility of faster recovery. These additional resources will be allocated in a way that offers equitable access across the zones. Wait times will level out, creating a win-win scenario for our patients and for our health care providers. At the heart of what we do, the health and wellness of our patients comes first. And we will continue to provide the best health care possible for all Albertans now and in the future. Thank you very much for having me here today. Thank you, Dr. Emery. We will now go to the phones for questions. We'll be doing two questions each. You can do one question, one follow-up, or choose to take them both off the top. With that, operator, can you please put through our first caller? First is James Keller with the Globe and Mail. Go ahead, James. Hi there. This is a question for the Premier. Uh, back to the carbon tax case. I know that Saskatchewan already has released specific plans, including a fuel tax based on the New Brunswick model. Um, is this something you're considering, and what other areas will you target? Thank you, James. As I said yesterday, we're keeping our options open. We're going to consult widely with Albertans on what they want the government to do following this ruling. Our key uh, goal will be to minimize the cost uh, of any new policy on Albertans and on our economy as we struggle to recover uh, from the COVID recession. Uh, so we're looking at all uh, options. I mean, one would be that New Brunswick kind of uh, East Coast model where uh, Atlantic provinces got a effectively recognition for their uh, their gas taxes as uh, complying with the federal legislation. Um, another would be uh, looking at Quebec's cap and trade because the, the imputed uh, price is about half of where we're going this year uh, with the federal carbon tax. It's $20 a ton effectively in Quebec versus $40 a ton uh, under the federal tax in the, the rest of the country as of April the 1st. Um, and uh, there are a number of other models. Of course, we already have our own uh, major emitter levy here, the Technology Innovation and Emissions Reduction Plan, which is uh, the latest iteration of uh, a levy that started uh, over a decade ago. So uh, we're going to do that work and do those consultations uh, and make a decision. But obviously, in the meantime, as a result of the Supreme Court decision, uh, the, uh, the current federal tax continues. And then a quick follow-up. Why did you not have plans in place in the event that uh, the decision didn't go your way? We hear a lot about you know, investors and industry and you know, Albertans. They need certainty, um, and we're kind of sort of in a period of limbo right now. So why didn't you have a backup plan ready to go? Well, investors and industry do have certainty, thanks to the Technology Innovation and Emissions Reduction Plan and the equivalency agreement that we secured with the Government of Canada in 2019. 
Uh, they also have certainty with respect to methane regulations. The industry uh, here was deeply concerned about the costs of, a, of the potential federal methane regulations, but we managed to get an equivalency agreement on that, uh, which allows Alberta to act as the regulator in a much more practical, common sense way that we think gets better emissions reductions uh, at a lower cost to industry. Uh, we also got certainty through the Section 11 agreement with the federal government on the Species at Risk Act with respect to uh, conservation of woodland uh, caribou habitat. Uh, so we, uh, you know, and we provided investor certainty in so many other ways, like the Royalty Guarantee Act, a platform commitment that assures industry that we're not going to be jerking around royalty rates like previous governments did. Uh, with respect to the retail carbon tax, we um, wanted to, like, it was our hope that we would win. And uh, we thought coming out of the Alberta Appeal Court that we had a reasonable chance of, of that. Uh, we did get a third of the Supreme Court uh, ruling with us yesterday. Uh, but now we're going to consult with Albertans on the path forward. Um, uh, one thing I can say is this, that as much as I dislike the federal carbon tax and don't think it really helps the environment, um, it is uh, less bad from an average consumer point of view than the previous NDP Alberta carbon tax because uh, the latter was designed basically just to squeeze taxpayers for more money, for wasteful spending on things like uh, uh, shower heads and light bulbs and uh, completely unnecessary subsidies for uh, renewable energy. Uh, and whereas a federal uh, tax is 90% uh, of it, at least notionally, is rebated. I, I'm not sure that the rebate s scheme uh, is, is properly designed, uh, but it is, has a much less negative effect on people's pocketbooks than the NDP tax did at the end of the day. Operator, can you please put through our next caller? Next is Fletcher Kent, Global News. Go ahead, Fletcher. Well, thank you. Premier, uh, first question that I had for you was just uh, in light of uh, some new modeling numbers coming out of Ottawa today with uh, COVID cases. Uh, ultimately, those models suggest that uh, if we maintain contacts as we are, we're going to see a massive spike thanks to variant numbers. Uh, given this, the, these modeling numbers, how do they compare to Alberta's? And in light of uh, what we're seeing, is it time to perhaps have another meeting of the COVID committee to see if there's any changes needed here for restrictions? Sure. Um, first of all, with respect to those models, I would just point out that Dr. Tam's office released uh, modeling three weeks ago, uh, which uh, was a com has proven to be completely inaccurate. And, and let me be blunt about this. We need to bring the public along with us and constantly publishing uh, models which time after time proved to be spectacularly inaccurate is not a great way to instill public confidence. Uh, and frankly, that's one of the reasons why we have not engaged in long-term modeling. Um, we do short-term projections because we do know, uh, we have a pretty good sense of, for example, the case to hospitalization ratio, case to ICU ratio, case to, to death ratio. Um, we do see those, those ratios coming down. Uh, thanks to the effect of the vaccination program, particularly on the most vulnerable, you see that reflected in the, um, uh, fortunately, in the uh, uh, fatality statistics recently, which have been uh, uh, the lowest they've been throughout the uh, pandemic. So um, we are concerned. We are concerned about the uh, increase in, in active cases, new cases, the rate of transmission. Uh, and hospitalizations, all of those metrics. That is why we made the difficult t decision not to proceed with the phase three of our path forward for reopening. Um, and in terms of the, the cab uh, cabinet uh, COVID committee, we meet at least once a week, usually more often than that, uh, to consider various aspects of pandemic response. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to do so. I, I, I was clear uh, it, when we launched the path forward in, in the first week of February, uh, that if we saw a, uh, a dangerous spike that, in our view, threatened the capacity of our healthcare system, uh, that we would uh, be prepared to act with additional targeted public health measures. Uh, I hope we don't have to do that. And uh, really, the single most powerful way we could prevent that is vaccines. We need more vaccines yesterday. And uh, that is, the, the, as we have always said in the last couple months, we're in a race between the vaccines and the variants. Um, I don't want the variants to win. And, and nor do we want to inflict massive damage on people 
through widespread restrictions. That's why the solution here is vaccines. The federal government has got to do its job to get us those doses. Operator, can you please put through our next caller? Next is Ashley Joanna with Post Media Edmonton. Edmonton. Go ahead, Ashley. Hi, good morning. This is a question for Minister Shandro. Um, this time last year, you told radiologists that their contract would be canceled in a year because you or your department thought you could find something more cost effective. Um, now it's my understanding that the department is negotiating an extension of the current uh, contract. Can you can you tell me how that's gone? Can you tell me um, what what happened and whether you think it was a mistake to uh, plan to cancel the contract in the first place? Sure. Thanks, Ashley. So first of all, let's remember that um, much of the work that radiologists do is in the community and not in a hospital. That's about 70% of what we spend on radiologists. For the 30% that is, is done in a hospital, like the MRI scans and the CT scans, um, that is, is work. Most of our radiologists are doing both uh, community work and work in the, the hospitals. And uh, you're, it was a, a contract that's actually with AHS. And you're right, we did make a, a direction to AHS to, uh, to begin work in negotiating a new contract. This was part of our action plan to address the, some of the systemic issues that we have with, um, with some of the wait times in, uh, in MRI and, and CT wait scans uh, and, and for patients to be able to get that, uh, that diagnostic imaging for the care then to be provided to them. So in that, that uh, aggressive action plan that we started in 2020, the AHS has done the work to, uh, to negotiate a, a bridging agreement. They're going to continue to, uh, to work with those radiologists and negotiating uh, new terms. And I look forward to AHS being successful in getting that uh, agreement. Operator, can you please put through our next caller? Next is Carly Robinson with City News Edmonton. Go ahead, Carly. Hi there. Whoever wants to take this, I'm just looking for a, a little bit more of a explanation onto the nuts and bolts of this $33 million, where exactly it's going to go and where the problem is stemming from. Will this be used for more staffing to rent out more MRIs to contract off? How is, how is this going to be used to reduce wait time? Sure, and uh, I don't know if Dr. Emery or Dr. Um, Jaffe would, would like to, to come up and provide more details, but uh, this is because of, uh, for, for, more, for more diagnostic imaging means uh, more scans being done, and uh, that does mean that we spend more for, um, for each of the, um, there, are, there are different fees that we pay our radiologists. There's uh, the technical fee as well as the professional fee. And for, for more scans to be done, that means more that is paid to the radiologist. Um, whether there's more staff to, that is required as well, I'll let Dr. Jaffe answer that question. Thank you very much. So ultimately, the $33 million is going to allow us to perform more CT and more MR exams. It will be used to, uh, to fund the uh, more staff where it's needed. Uh, to fund the interpretation of those exams, uh, and it will be used throughout the, uh, the entire DI uh, spectrum of activities in order to, to promote more activity, and ultimately, uh, we will actually reduce the cost per test, but we will be able to perform more tests over the course of the year. Thanks, Dr. Jaffe. Okay, can we, we have time for one more question. So, Operator, can you please put through our last caller? The question is Charlotte Dumoulin with Radio Canada. Go ahead, Charlotte. Oui, bonjour, Monsieur Kenny. Dans un point de presse, Santé Canada aujourd'hui a recommandé euh, à ce qu'on mette en place plus de mesures. On voit les cas augmenter. On voit aussi qu'en Europe, les pays n'ont pas eu le choix pour faire face aux variants de mettre plus de restrictions. Donc, pourquoi en Alberta, on n'est pas prêt à en mettre? Tout d'abord, nous nous inquiétons de euh, nouvelles vagues des cas de COVID-19 qui sont conduits par euh, les variations de concern euh, et nous euh, le suivons euh, de près. Euh, si c'est nécessaire d'agir avec les mesures de santé publique ciblées euh, pour protéger le, le, les vies et le système de santé, euh, nous le ferons. Uh, mais uh, maintenant, nous, uh, nous, nous surveillons la situation, comme j'ai dit, de près. 
Euh, écoutez, euh, selon une analyse que j'ai vue à Radio-Canada hier, euh, l'Alberta est dans la meilleure position de toutes les provinces en ce qui concerne la disponibilité euh, des, des lits au euh, care intensif. Euh, alors, euh, ça, je crois, ça, ça confirme que nous avons pris euh, une approche responsable euh, dans les, les dernières semaines. Euh, nous avons seulement à peu près 45 personnes euh, dans les, euh, les lits de, de soins intensifs. Euh, alors, euh, ça, ça compare à une, la disponibilité de 650 lits euh, dans ces situations comme ça. Alors, nous avons les capacités, mais le, le truc important, c'est les vaccins. C'est les vaccins parce que euh, maintenant, nous avons une concurrence entre les vaccins et les variations de, de virus. Euh, et nous exigeons que le gouvernement fédéral euh, nous fournisse avec les vaccins dont nous avons besoin euh, aussitôt que possible. Thanks, euh, est-ce que je peux poser une autre question? <laughs> Oui, bonjour. Allô? Allô. Oui, alors, est-ce que vous reconnaissez, par contre, euh, comme plusieurs professionnels de la santé, qu'on est dans une troisième vague en Alberta? Évidemment, c'est une vague. Euh, je dirais que oh, oh, nous n'avons pas pris, a vu vraiment, excuse-moi, nous n'avons pas eu vraiment une première vague. Dans le printemps dernier, les chiffres étaient très bas. Mais évidemment, ça, c'est une vague qui nous inquiète. Nous le voyons dans plusieurs parties du, du monde occidental. Et ce qui me, me rend très frustré, c'est que euh, le Canada n'est pas bien préparé parce que euh, l'échec du gouvernement fédéral compte au provisionnement des vaccins. C'est la raison pour laquelle, à nouveau, j'exige le fédéral de faire leur boulot et d'obtenir euh, euh, millions de doses des vaccins et aussitôt que possible pour euh, protéger les vies et le système de santé publique au Canada. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone.